They said it couldn't be done, too high, too remote, too dangerous. But China's building a high-speed rail across the Himalayas, and it's headed straight for Tibet. And if you're sitting in New Delhi right now, that should make you very, very nervous. And no, not because of the ridiculous amounts of smog, pollution, and cow fumes that you're breathing in. See, this isn't just another shiny train project. This is one of the most ambitious infrastructure feats in human history, and it's happening right in one of the most geopolitically sensitive regions on Earth. Wait, let's dive right into it. China's building a high-speed rail line that connects Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province, to Lhasa, the capital of Tibet. When it's finished, this route will stretch over 1,400 kilometers, most of it through some of the most extreme terrain on the planet. Think snowy peaks, deep gorges, earthquake zones, and oxygen-starved altitudes where even helicopters struggle to fly. And China isn't just making a small dent in the mountains here. They're drilling, blasting, and tunneling their way through some of the most unforgiving geography known to man. This isn't the flat plains where you throw down a few tracks and call it a day. Over 70% of the route consists of bridges and tunnels. Let that sink in. More than two-thirds of this railway will either be slicing through rock or soaring above ravines. Now, what's the price tag? Try 320 billion yuan. That's around 44 billion U.S. dollars. It's one of the most expensive rail projects in history, and it's being fast-tracked. Pun intended, of course. China aims to complete this mega project by 2030, with some sections already operational. This isn't the first time China has defied the odds with infrastructure in Tibet. Back in 2006, it shocked the world by completing the Qinghai-Tibet Railway, the highest railway on Earth. Critics said it was impossible. China proved them wrong. But this new line? It's even harder. It's truly next level. We're talking about building rail that zips along at over 160 kilometers per hour in terrain that gives seasoned mountain climbers headaches. And why is China doing this? Sure, there's the economic angle. Tibet is rich in minerals, hydropower potential, and tourism opportunities. They just started construction of the world's largest dam in Tibet. And linking this region better with the rest of China means more development, more jobs, more integration. But let's not pretend this is just about boosting tourism or shaving a few hours off delivery times. This railway has a very clear strategic goal. If and when it's completed, China will be able to transport troops and supplies from Sichuan to the Tibetan Plateau in a matter of hours. That's a game changer. Right now, moving military personnel into Tibet takes days. Convoys slog it out on winding mountain roads. Logistics are a nightmare. But with this rail line, entire divisions could be mobilized in the blink of an eye. And this is exactly why India is sweating, because this isn't just any old border. This is the line of actual control. The tense, ill-defined frontier between China and India that runs through Ladakh, Arunachal Pradesh, and the Tibetan Plateau. These two nuclear powers have clashed here repeatedly. The most recent flashpoint? Ladakh, 2020. Chinese and Indian troops got into a brutal hand-to-hand -hand skirmish in the Gawan Valley. No guns. Just fists, rocks, and nail-studded clubs. At least 20 Indian soldiers died. China also suffered casualties, though the exact number remains classified. Most international sources agree, however, that China came off better, probably because its soldiers aren't malnutritioned and live on a varied and healthy diet, as opposed to eating the same old curry every day. Let's not forget the Cargill War in 1999, where India and Pakistan traded blows over similar high-altitude terrain just next door. The entire Himalayan arc is a powder keg, and China's building a high-speed supply line right through it. And who could forget the infamous 1962 Sino-Indian War, where Chinese forces stormed into Aksai Chin, crushed the Indian army, and made them retreat, all in one month. So from Beijing's point of view, this project serves three main purposes. First, it's a marvel of engineering, a demonstration of what Chinese infrastructure can achieve in the most extreme environments. It's a way to show the world that China doesn't just talk big, unlike a certain neighbor, but that it actually builds big. Second, it's a tool of national integration. Tibet has always been a politically sensitive region, especially in the eyes of Western media. Free Tibet, they used to shout. Strengthening physical ties between Tibet and the rest of China sends a message. This land is ours. It's connected, and it's not going anywhere. Third, it's a military asset. 
a fast, reliable route to move men and material across the plateau. In the event of a crisis, this rail line could decide the outcome of any future conflict along the border. So, yeah, India should be panicking right now. Let's be honest here. India simply cannot match this. While China is laying high-speed tracks across the Himalayas, India is still struggling to electrify its existing lines, its so-called bullet train between Mumbai and Ahmedabad, still incomplete after years of delays. Most of India's military supply lines to the northern frontier are still primitive roads that get washed out during monsoons or choked with snow in winter. Imagine a tank trying to get up there by using dusty pothole-riddled roads with cows swarming it. Even Indian defense analysts admit it. China's infrastructure advantage is huge, and this railway makes it even bigger. India's army might have more mountain warfare experience, but it lacks the logistics to mobilize quickly. In contrast, China now has a growing network of highways, airports, and soon high-speed rail lines right up to the border. And that's terrifying for India's generals. It's not just about trains, it's about time. In war, time is everything. Who can reinforce faster? Who can supply longer? Who can shift troops where they're needed most at a moment's notice? China is betting that this rail line will give it the edge. Let's also talk about symbolism. The Tibetan Plateau is often called the roof of the world. It's the source of Asia's major rivers, the Yangtze, the Mekong, the Brahmaputra, the Indus. Whoever controls this region controls the water taps of nearly 2 billion people. By tightening its grip on Tibet, China isn't just securing its own backyard. It's asserting dominance over a region that affects all of South and Southeast Asia. India has long tried to stake a moral claim on Tibet. The Dalai Lama fled there in 1959 and lives in exile in India to this day. Western media loves to use Tibet as a stick to beat China with. But facts on the ground tell a different story. China is not just holding Tibet, it's developing it, integrating it, and now connecting it with one of the most advanced rail systems in the world. India, on the other hand, is still clinging to nostalgia and hand-wringing. While China's building bridges, India's building excuses. And let's not forget the wider implications. This rail line is just one piece of a much larger picture. China is already pushing its Belt and Road Initiative through Central Asia, building ports in the Indian Ocean, and investing in countries that used to sit firmly in India's sphere of influence, Nepal, Sri Lanka, the Maldives. In short, China is surrounding India with concrete and steel. While Indian politicians are busy giving speeches and waving flags, China is laying the groundwork for real, lasting influence. Literally. This isn't just about a train, it's about power. Power to move, power to respond, power to dominate. And while the West fixates on headlines about China's economy slowing down or its property sector wobbling, Beijing continues to build the future, one rail line at a time. If the Sichuan-Tibet railway is completed on schedule, it will stand as one of the greatest feats of human engineering. It will turn the Himalayas from an obstacle into an artery. And it will send a very clear message. China isn't just playing defense anymore. It's coming to the table with speed, with strength, and with steel. And if you're sitting in Delhi or Washington, you'd better start paying attention because this train isn't stopping. If you found this breakdown helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.